So I think we live in an age in which emotions, to a large extent, guide and misguide politics, and of course also vice versa. And in many ways this is the age of anxiety. It's almost like an existential angst. We're worried about the future, whether our children will have equal circumstances, job opportunities, education opportunities. We're worried about the composition of the societies, the changes underway. So there's a lot of anxiety. There's also fear, there's also anger, frustration, resentment and bitterness. And all of that affects the political landscape. The solution, in my eyes, is not to further to deepen polarization. I think we need to be very careful about that and we need to find a way to smash these dualities. Because coming from a country like Turkey, one of the things that I have learned in my own lifetime that I've seen happening is whenever countries are divided bitterly, the only people who benefit from that kind of polarization are the populist demagogues. They love that. They thrive upon that. So to me, the way forward is um, layered. On the one hand, I think we should be very vocal and open about our criticism of populist demagoguery, ultranationalism, religious fundamentalism, all kinds of ideologies that divide humanity into imaginary camps of us versus them and claim that us is superior to them. They're not close to my heart. So I should be very critical or open, you know, clear in my criticism of that way of thinking and the, and the demagogues who exploit that kind of thinking. But at the same time, the biggest question, I think, in front of many progressives is, how do I connect with the people? People might have voted for Brexit, people have, might have voted for Trump, people have, might have voted in very different ways that I personally would like to see. That is not enough reason for me to stay away from them. That is not good. So if we become disconnected, withdrawn into our own tribes, then we will be surrounded with mirrors. You know, only the echoes of our own voice. And that won't help us. And in fact, I think that's a very narcissistic existence. If I'm only surrounded by people who think like me, vote like me, eat like me, dress up like me, I only want to see my own mirror image. Whereas I think in life we learn from difference and we should not forget that. But the biggest question of course is, do we have the language? What is the language? What is the narrative that goes beyond tribes and smashes that duality and dualistic way of thinking? Do we even have a common language right now because we're so divided into tribes of anger? Um, but my mind is very clear about that. I mean, I don't want to go into one tribe just because I'm angry at another tribe. It won't work like that. So I have a very critical view on um, identity politics, the way identity politics is being understood and practiced in many parts of the world. I think as human beings, we have multiple belongings. Rather than being reduced to a single identity and being okay with that, I want to fight for multiplicity, for pluralism. And I think that's one of the things that today's populist movements have in common. They are essentially anti-pluralistic. They can't deal with multiplicity. They all want to reduce us to single categories. And I think we need to resist that. And if I may add this, I lived in Boston for some time uh, at Mount Holyoke. And one of the th things I learned in, in the area um, I learned a lot from particularly African-American women's movement of past generations, reading about them, reading about their work. That left a big impact on me. So when you read people like Audre Lorde, all these women, they, had, they, they believed in multiplicity. Because they were women, they were aware of sexism. Because they were black, they were aware of racism. Because many of them came from disadvantaged communities, they were aware of class and economic inequalities. Many of them came from LGBT backgrounds. They were aware about, they were aware of homophobia, transphobia, etc. So for them, power was multi-layered. And when you read their work, uh, for instance, Audre Lorde, she says, look at me, I'm a, I'm a woman, I'm black, uh, I'm a poet, I'm lesbian, I'm this, I'm that, and many, many more things you might not be able to notice when you first look at me. So 
there's that emphasis, like Walt Whitman used to say, I contain multitudes. I think we lost that in today's progressive movement. We all contain multitudes. If I can remember that, if someone else can remember that, there's a better chance that we might overlap and find a common ground, rather than thinking we belong in mutually exclusive camps, because then it's, it's inevitable to clash.